Hello, this is John from tcmathacademy.com. And in this video, we're gonna figure out what the square root of 1000 is equal to. And the best part of this problem is we're not going to use a calculator. So basically, I'm gonna give you two answers uh, to this problem in just one second. Uh, one answer is going to be an exact version or the exact, a simpler way to write the square root of 1000 in an exact way. That's basically what I want to say. And then we're going to talk about an approximation to the square root of 1000. So if you think you can figure this problem out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer to this problem in just one second. Also, if you need help in math with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, Again, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out in some small way, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go and take a look at the square root of 1000. And here are the answers that hopefully you came up with. So the square root of 1000 is exactly equal to 10 times the square root of 10, and that's approximately the decimal 31.6. So if you came up with either one of these answers, I would say you got this thing right. And if that is the case, let's go ahead and give yourself a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% for knowing a little bit about square roots. Now, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you're gonna to have to know how to deal with square roots. And this symbol in algebra is actually called a radical because a square root is when we're taking, let me go ahead and just give you a quick example right here. This would be like the square root of four, which means find two numbers, the exact same two numbers, such that when you multiply them together, you get back to four. Of course, two times two gets us back to four. So this is a square root. But what if we have uh, something like this with this little three over here and an eight right there? What is this? Well, this is a cube root. So basically this is saying find three numbers, the exact number, when you multiply it by itself three times, you get back to this number. Of course, that would be two, two times two times two is eight. So this is uh, the cube root. So square root, cube root, this symbol here, you just wanna know that this is referred to as a radical. So for those of you that are studying algebra, you're probably gonna have a chapter or units on square roots and radical uh, expressions, radical equations, et cetera, et cetera. But let's go ahead and get into this problem right now. And really the key to doing this problem is knowing uh, two things, all right? One, you need to know a property of radicals and square roots. And this is the one here that we're going to need to use. This is not that difficult, but basically, this is what it says. So when we take the square root of a number, obviously a number like a thousand, what you wanna do is look to see if you can factor that number. So if you have two factors, and let's just kind of give you a simple um, version of this. So if I have the square root of four, factors of four would be two times two. So that would be two times two, like so. So two times two are factors of four, so this A and B, is uh, are factors of a larger number. But if you have a number in, uh, and you have its factors, now you can have more than two factors. The main idea is that you could split those square roots apart like this. So in this example, the square root of two, we can actually write this as the square root of two times the square root of two. Okay, so you could write it that way. However, it's not advantageous to do that. You're better off doing it this way, but basically just so you understand how this property works, um, you know, this is key again to be able to do this problem. Now, this is only one of several properties you need to know about square roots and radicals. By the way, if you're studying this and need additional help with this, I teach this in my algebra, uh, algebra one course and algebra two course. I also have additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with this. But uh, let's go ahead and continue on. Uh, so we're going to need to know uh, this property to do this problem. And then you're going to want to know something about what we call perfect square factors. So remember, we're going to be looking to factor this number 1,000. But when we're factoring a number that we're trying to simplify in terms of a square root, we want to be especially on the lookout for these numbers here. They're called perfect squares. So let's take a look at uh, some examples of perfect squares. So 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and this goes on and on and on. These are what we call perfect square factors because when we take the square roots of these, the square root of four is two, the square root of nine is three, the square root of 16 is four, 
and so forth. In other words, we can find the square root of these lovely numbers here without the aid of a calculator. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this all together. And so here we have the square root of 1,000. So again, we're going to be using uh, this property here. We're going to want to factor this uh, 1,000. And we're going to want to factor. There's a lot of different ways you can factor 1,000. But when we factor this, we want to be thinking about perfect squares. And you can see here, 1,000, when we factor it, we could factor it this way, 100 times 10. So 100 is a nice, big, perfect square factor because the square root of 100, hopefully you know, is 10. Okay, so 10 times 10 is 100. But the main idea here is that we can write 1,000 as the fat um, as the product of these two factors 100 times 10 again now here 100 is the, um, the largest perfect square factor that can fit into uh, 1000 here okay that we can find at least uh, I'm pretty sure I am correct when I say that but nevertheless here's the thing you can um, use other perfect square factors and it would still reduce down your final answer still would be the same so don't get too kind of um stuck on trying to find the largest perfect square factor it's convenient to do so but if you just have a couple perfect square factors just go with it and as you work the problem down you'll still get to the same correct final answer okay so again uh, the square root of 1000 is the same thing as the square root of 100 times 10 these two factors we can split and this is the key right here so the square root of 1000 times i'm sorry the square root of uh, 100 times 10 is the same thing as the square root of 100 times the square root of 10. okay so now this is where the fun part uh comes into play so we have the square root of 100 which of course is 10 and the square root of 10 we could just write like so so this answer is going to be 10 times the square root of 10 so this would be our final answer and this is what we would call an exact answer okay so if your teacher said um, or if you had some sort of test or quiz and said find um, uh, simplify the square root of 1000 into an exact answer this is what we call an exact answer because the square root of 10 is what we call an irrational number when you go on your calculator and you take the square root of 10 you're going to get this decimal but that decimal is what we call uh, an irrational decimal basically it doesn't repeat and it never ends so to write the entire uh, decimal out it would take infinity and you and i do not have that time so uh, from this point forward if we take it um, the square root of 10 on our calculators we're basically go, going from an exact answer to an approximation but again you know when you're doing problems you know, word problems, and let's say you're doing some geometry problem that deals with area, volume, whatever the case is, oftentimes you do need to get an approximation of a square root. And of course, you want to use your calculator for that. But let's, you know, kind of stick with this basic idea of um, not using our calculator. So how could we get some sort of real basic approximation for the square root of 1,000? So we know it's equal to 10 times the square root of 10. But uh, here's the good part, right? So here's the square root of 10. Let's try to get a sense of uh, its actual value. Well, we know what the square root of 9 is. So 9 is not that far away from 10. The square root of 9 is 3. And so what's the next number we know? Well, the next number we know would be the square root of 16, right? So the square root of 16 is 4. So between 9 and 16, there are no... Uh, uh, other perfect square factors. So when we're trying to kind of estimate the square root of 10, what do you think that's going to be? It's going to be 3.5, 3.9. Well, listen, 10 is pretty close to 9. And if the square root of 9 is 3.0, maybe the square root of 10 will be like maybe 3.1, 3.2. And actually, if you go into your calculator, it's approximately 3.16. But we could just kind of use common sense to uh, basically get some uh, get a decimal value so we can start estimating to kind of get, um, you know, some sort of uh, pretty decent approximation of this final answer. Okay, but when you do this, um, you know, you want to use these other values just to kind of gauge off your first, you know, kind of gauge a first guess, because really what we're talking about here is a guess and check method. You take a number, you can square it and see where you're at, and then you kind of just keep adjusting it. So we want to get a decimal, um, you know, approximation as close as we can the first time. 
So let's just go ahead and go with this three point, let's say the square root of 10. Now the actual approximation, this is pretty close, 3.16. But let's suppose you said, you know what, I think I'm just gonna use 3.1. You know, it's a little bit more than this three. That would be pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. So what you can have is 10 times the square root of 10. Of course, we simplify this down. And this square root of 10, we're gonna call 3.1. We'll just estimate it somewhere in that uh, neighborhood. So 10 times 3.1 is 31. So let's see how close we got. Well, 31 squared, 31 times 31, would be 961. So if you wanted to do this calculation, what would this answer tell you? Well, 31 is, you know, it's not quite a thousand. So we would want to add a little bit more to our decimal here, maybe 3.13, 3.14. Of course, as you can, uh, continue to you know play around with this, you'll see that 3.16 works pretty well. Okay, so let's go to wrap up this video. Again, if you are studying algebra, you're gonna need to know a lot about square roots and radicals. So, you know, make sure you practice, 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 as this is a pretty basic problem. There's all sorts of different problems you're gonna have to do. And you're gonna be doing a lot of work without a calculator. So again, if you need additional help with this, just check out my site and uh, my YouTube channel. There's a ton of help available. Just make sure that you follow up and get help for anything you do not understand. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.